Welcome to Scream Queens Season 1, Episode 2. This episode is called Hell Week. And, yeah, so, spoilers for these first two episodes throughout this video. And, yeah, like the first episode, I absolutely loved this episode. So, let's dive right in. So, another needle drop opening. Big fan, hope they keep that up. And... We get some voiceover from Dean Munch, who, you know, she says she used to, Dean's used to have power, but now in the age of social media, they, they don't so much, let's see, and, you know, everyone's a suspect. And the Dean says, legally, we can't make you stay, but I can make it so that you will fail you know if you if you leave the the campus so it's yeah and and they're they're brainstorming ways to get rid of um what was her name again uh Chanel number 2 you know her body i really like the angles like they they there are several shots where it's like you can see her face and like the the wound it's just very very like yeah very typical slasher, you know, and th yeah, so they're brainstorming ways to get rid of the, the, to hide the corpse of Chanel number two, and, <laughs> um, I forget which number, Chanel number five, Abigail Breslin, is like, okay, pigs will eat anything, so if we get a pig, you know, it'll eat it, and it's gone, and, and, you know, Chanel number one is like, yeah, we'll just go down to the hog market and buy ourselves a sow, and then the, the, um, uh, hold on, Chanel number three, you know, is like, there is the, you know, if, if the, you know, the, the, I, f I don't remember the entire thing, but something about, like, you could, she, you know, they were told, don't go skating on the, ah, what's it called? You know, yeah, don't, don't go skating on the, on the poop, you know, place, you'll, you'll drown, and, it's, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> and I love that, that, um, okay, apparently her name is, is Hester Ulrich. I feel bad about using the the nickname since they were made up by Chanel number no. one. Hester knows exactly what to do. Like she has thought about this. This is not even like she's not even really shocked. Like this is when she learns that there's a dead body there, isn't it? I th I think this is the scene where she finds, oh, you've got a dead body. Here's what you do. You know, like just. Every single little detail of it, she knows. You know, okay, drain the drain the fluids and and the, the deal with the the bones. Maybe, what was it? Take out the teeth and burn off the fingerprints. It just like, how many times have you done this? Don't answer that. I don't want to know. And the <laughs> and she's like. Can I call you mom? And and you know, Billy Lord's character says, "Yeah, I heard about this thing. Like, this, you know, people, young young people today like to idolize certain people, and they like to imagine them as you know. So they're like making them role models. And say, yeah, you know. can I call all of you mom? That's that's wrong and really confusing. <laughs> and you know, and and the moment that." They say, okay, fine, you can call us mom. She starts doing, you know, so, mom. <laughs> and they, they they have to get a, you know, a security guard. And, uh, let's see, what was her, um, hmm. Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna have the character name momentarily. Ah, uh, okay, it's gotta be in here. So, okay, um, 
See, I don't really want to... The, the character's... Yes. The character's real name is Sam. And the... the Yes. So the actress, Gina Han. And I, I read an, an interview. She actually, you know... You know, I, last when I talked about episode one, I talked about you know Def Taylor Swift, and apparently, you know, the character Sam is actually also, you know, she feels like it's good representation, you know, and and it is, you know, yeah, it's it's unusual to see, you know, so she's she's androgynous. Her words, not mine you know she is apparently lesbian in real life and she is asian and like we've seen honestly even a dro androgynous which I, uh, no i'm pretty sure that one is that's not of offensive i i don't mean to offend the lgbtq community uh, the the um, but yeah you know i ch i try to be an ally but i can't i'm i'm not always good at keeping up with the the changes to make sure everything's as inclusive as possible but but you know we've seen yeah not not a huge amount of androgynous people in media they they tend to get kind of erased or they're they're not really allowed to be characters they're just there as like punchlines or such and yeah like asian lesbians like it's that's also it's it's only fairly recently that that's been you know <clears throat> So so yeah, you know that's that's really really cool that they you know they actually like the the but but yeah you know she has the line that's yeah I think I'm 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 not gonna repeat it but you probably know which one because it's the one that leads them to to get a, a female guard instead of instead of a male and you know I love that you know Gigi's like okay so I let my fingers do the walking and I looked in the yellow pages and Billy Lord's like what's that <laughs> because young people today haven't had to use the yellow pages you know I'm old enough to remember yellow pages I haven't used them in forever but I do remember they exist and I love the confidence of Denise Hemphill, prone to refer to herself in third person. Just, you know, she's completely on the, the yeah. And and the the thing with you know, okay, so step one, scream my name. Then I'll know to come get you. If that doesn't work, means I'm not on the premises. Call this number. If you have, if they put you on hold, and it's gonna be a while, run to a safe place, then call the number. You know, and and it's like, I would give my own cell phone, but what was it like? There's there's some reason that that couldn't. So she's directing them to like, you know, I mean, I'm I'm like 99% sure that that number is like, that's that's like the control the the central control for this for the the company she works for you know and it's like yeah you that's not really you don't want to be stuck having to dial that number when you are in danger like it's probably flooded with calls especially when there's a serial killer in in this one area you know and let's see yeah so so grace has to get soap and we see the red devil in the you know and the, they have just enough light on him and then he pulls back into the darkness absolutely love it and and very very slasher you know this kind of cuz it's like you know if you stop to think about it it's like why is he doing that like what is what is the purpose of being visible briefly and then disappearing into the dark? Like, there's no reason for it. It's just for the audience's benefit, you know? Just absolutely... I love how this show just skewers... It's it's such a great satire of slasher tropes. 
I love the genre, but I 100% acknowledge there's a lot of ridiculous tropes in it. And, yeah, you know, there's the thing of, okay, that's not the right kind of soap, that's not the right... The right kind of soap is up there, so she does the thing, and because it's a slasher movie, of course, the thing goes wrong, so that we can have a situation, you know, and there's a, although I suppose that's really an American movie thing in general, but, but yeah, you know, behind, there's a locked door, you know, and the, the, um, Abigail Breslin shows up, and the, you know, she, and and she lets slip that Chanel number one is the only person who has the key, which is of course very like sus. That is that is not, yeah. And let's see, yeah. And and Grace and Pete, you know, kiss, and it's very sweet until they start talking afterwards and she's like you're ruining everything stop talking you're ruining everything that was good about it thanks <laughs> and the yeah the, uh, let's see. yeah and and Wes Grace's father is concerned and yeah you know you you can you can understand why Dean Munch you're trying to seduce me and it's, it is, like, just, she's so forward, it's so funny, like, she puts, like, she doesn't just, like, imply it, she literally puts her hand on his thigh, inner thigh, too, and is like, I, I, it, did she say, I think she did say, I love of a concerned father, it turns me on. She says something along those lines. Like, she could not be. She's There's like a neon sign above her head that says, I am available. You know, it, it could not be more just, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and the, you know, Grace does get into the, the locker room and Chanel number one you know, comes in there and explains some, and whose clothes are these? Your mom. I did think until the, the you know, this episode, she says she's 18, so that's not, it can't have been her mother, you know, unless she was cryogenically frozen for two years. Okay, that's probably not what happened, but, you know, yeah, I... It's, it seemed like that was where they were going, but it also seemed too obvious for that to actually be it. Like, literally, the first scene of the first episode is the, the you know, the unknown woman giving birth and then dying. And then we meet Grace, and we hear that her mother died when she was very young. So it's like... That's too obvious. That that can't be, you know, because that's like, okay, there's that's that's a motive. That's probably one of the most com like, and it's it's you know, there's there's history, it's, you know, there the, it would not be the first story st slasher story or slory for short that <laughs> wherein someone was getting revenge for their dead mother. You know, so it's, but, but yeah, that appears to have been a, a misdirect. And we get the flashback and we see that the, the maid and Dean Munch were actually part of hiding what happened. So yeah, did not see that coming. Um, that really, yeah, I really appreciate, like legit you know, Dean, like, the more we learn about her, the more we realize she's actually kind of as bad, like, I feel like it is trying to be a show where everyone, there's something bad about everyone, like, every single character we learn something about, there's something about them that's, like, deeply off-putting, you know, so, yeah. Let's see... 
you know, even if you wanted to say, oh, I mean, Grace is kind of innocent. Well, she talked Zayde into pledging, even though Zayde was 100% not on board with that at, at first. And this episode, you know, the way she talks to, to Pete, like, you know, it's okay if, if the, you know, it was a spur of the moment thing and she doesn't want, you know, maybe she doesn't want to dwell on it or something, but don't say to the person you just kissed, stop talking, you're ruining everything that was good about. It. Like, that's not okay. Like, so, so, you know, all of, it seems like all of the characters and, and it does, you know, that's, that's very much a thing that is like, countless slasher movies will have almost no or sometimes zero likable characters like there's they're all going to be obnoxious in some way you know and yeah it's it's that they're doing a really good job of that here and let's see yeah, and, and, you know, Chanel number one breaks up with Chad. I really, I don't think I said it in the first one. I really appreciate that they did legit call this character Chad. Like, was that already a thing in 2015? Or, because it's like an incel, you know, the, the, the men who get all the women are Chads. Um, is it, would it be too obvious if the... Um, Let's see, because I, what was the, um, <clears throat> oh, wow, this is, um, Stacy, if, if there was at least one character known as Stacy, one known as Becky, you know, that might be a little too on the nose if they also had that, but I do really appreciate, because he is a Chad, like, the, if if you don't know what a Chad is, I feel like you could watch a scene of this show that features the character Chad, and you'll know. You know, actually, it's possible that this is where the the incels got the idea to name it Chad. But yeah, anyway, the the um, yeah, you know, Chanel number one breaks up with him, and it is also like, dude, so so. First, he's saying, I want to choke you. And then she says, Chad, there's a serial killer on the loose. Don't talk about choking me. And then he says, I want to have sex with your corpse, which of course is not okay with her either. And then he says, well, you mentioned the serial killer. You put it in my head. You made, you made me picture it. Wow. I, like, they're really making the point that, like, if you are conventionally attractive enough, you can get away with being, like, ridiculous. Like, if, you know, nobody should be able to say these things and, and, like, still be appealing to anyone, you know. But the show is saying, and there is some truth to it, if you're sufficiently conventionally attractive, you know, it is that trope of conventionally attractive people don't have to have appealing personalities. Which, you know, not every single conventionally attractive person is awful, but there is definitely, there are some. Let's see, but but yeah, you know, so she ends up breaking up with him, and he says, nobody breaks up with Chad Radwell, you'll be sorry. And the, so, so yeah, you know, like, I feel like everyone has at least one line that makes you think, oh, they gotta be the killer, huh? Let's see... And the, yeah, we learned that Boone, they say gay, but I don't know if he's gay or bi, so I, ah, crap. You know, I think I will just say, ah, gay. I'll, I'll refer to him as bi, because I feel like we heard that he was also with at least one. Boone is gay or bi, and the, you know, they have the thing about, 
you know, the, the, it, this is not the first time that he has asked to climb into bed with Chad because he's scared. And he's got the little, little, uh, frog that, that croaks when you, when you squeeze it or something. And, and, like, like, stuff, stuffed animal thing and the, is that what it's called? T teddy bear kind of thing, you know. And apparently last time he did it, he tried to touch Ch Chad's wiener. And the, the, you know, and, and actually, I mean, Chad is okay with Boone being gay or bi. He just doesn't want him to touch because Boone knows that Chad is straight. So, and, and it does, of course, uh, you know, it's very unfortunate to, to play into this myth of LGBTQ people being inherently, like, predatory but on the other hand, I mean, it's only because he's so sexually repressed. You know, if he if he could be openly gay, he could find or bi, he could find someone who's openly gay or bi and be with them instead. So I feel like it's more commenting on that because the episode makes a big deal out of, you know, frats and sororities don't really openly support LGBTQ people. So that's yeah and. You know, yeah, it's a it's a joke and it's kind of homophobic. But Chanel number one points out there's a lot of gay and bi people in media, in like in in popular entertainment. Like a lot of them are not on camera or they're they're like keeping you know they're 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 closeted. But yeah, I I did that that was a good yeah I I feel like that's what the the show is doing and and at the end of the day this is not exactly a show to go to for like super progressive you know yeah now let's see and Chanel finds them and and sees the two of them in bed and and makes some homophobic comments and you know Chad says everyone wants me women men zoo animals plants probably And the let's see, and and yeah, I I appreciate like straight up, you know. The, so yeah, I'm breaking up with you. Um, I broke up with you. Why did you come here? Right. I'm so sorry. Let's be together again. I'm breaking up with you. You know, just the the yeah, and and he straight up says, "I'm breaking up with you because you're homophobic." I I I'm not sure it was the only thing he said as as a reason for breaking up with her, but that was certainly something that he pointed to as part of the reason he's breaking up with her. Which I mean, that's seriously badass. That's awesome. Every straight guy should be willing to break up with his female partner if she's homophobic, especially if he has a friend, you know, and they're, like, he knows that Boone is gay or bi, they're still roommates, you know, like, there's so many straight people who would be like, I can't share, a, a, you know, I can't be roommates with someone who is attracted to me when I'm not attracted, you know, regardless of, yeah, a lot of straight people feel uncomfortable around gay or bi people. And there's absolutely no reason for it. Now, there's no there's no logical reason for it. And I love that Pete, you know, he's breaking into the, the Dean's office. And he's like super smooth with the diamond cutter, making a perfect circle, reaching through, get, you know, working the, the knob, opening the door. And then the entire glasses breaks. That was really, really funny. Like, just... <laughs> and it's it's just it's such an obvious joke. I I you know I'm not gonna claim that it's some like ingenious new new you know twist up, but just it's I find it really funny. Let's see and the yeah he finds some some names and Red Devil you know grabs him and you know leaves him on the. On, on campus, and it says, you know, M-Y-O-B, mind your own business. 
and then we see that he has a red devil suit in the closet and he's like well, what it's the it's the you know school mascot you know which does like that's you know that seems legit and certainly like if you know if if he is either red devil or working with red devil it like why would he be because he's not shocked that the suit is there you know he's not like who put that there you know so like that would certainly be very audience manipulative to to have the so so yeah anyway the the ah um, uh, let's see what was the so but but yeah i i like you know now that pete knows that grace is at least somewhat attracted to him he's like saying oh what well, oh yeah i you know, I, I guess I'm just so messed up, you know, I didn't feel like putting clothes back on, and, you know, like, the, the, and, and she's like, okay, can we just, can you put on, like, a robe or something, is, do you, do you have, like, oh, oh ah, crap, what's the, a, a, a shawl or, or something, and, yeah, and we learn that based on his age, he could be the baby from the flashback. And we learn that, you know, the, so the, you know, Boone, who may be gay or bi, comes to the, the table, and, you know, Chanel number one makes a really homophobic joke about private, or it, one of the Chanel's at least. And, you know, the, the, I, I did find it pretty funny when like so so you know he's he's taking a little while to get to his point and Billy Lord is like you've been talking for a while <laughs> and it's just like you know skip to the end and the then you have the you know he's like I want to come out on my own terms and then I want to join Kappa Kappa Tau because you have to accept everyone you know, and it, it, what, like, Dean didn't, didn't say every woman. She said every one. Every one who pledges Kappa Kappa Tau will be, you know, you'll have to, to accept them. You know, so, yeah, I, it's, it's really, really, the, the, yeah. And, and, you know, she talks about, well, it'll, you know, if I'm the first person to accept uh, a gay person, in Kappa Kappa, into Kappa Kappa Tau, that means that, you know, it'll, it'll really help me when I join, when I become a media personality. And let's see. And, and I think it's Abigail Breslin who's like completely, that, this is unacceptable. And Gigi and Wes, you know, I, I, it's, it's, you know, at first it's like, you know, she's, you know, she, she goes there to, to talk to her and it's like, you know, Grace is like, oh, I can't believe my dad is doing, you know, and then Wes is like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, she's probably embarrassed. Oh no, she thinks it's super sweet, you know, just to, yeah, and, and they're like singing along to the, the song and he's like, I'm the playlist guy. Are you? Because... That might mean you made the playlist for the the Cap Capital party f twenty years ago. Hmm. You know, it's it's a great little like, just which you know, technically that doesn't actually that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that he necessarily you know, like maybe he was DJing at that. You know, that doesn't mean that he knows anything. But it just it it sits in your mind. And it's like. Does that mean, you know, just, which is, again, very, very slasher to, to have the, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and Denise does not want to go to where they think the, the Red Devil is, which is legitimate, you know, like, he's, she's, she's watched a horror movie, what do you want? You know, she knows that black people in horror movies, uh, you know, yeah, because... There's a lot of racism, so often the black character will die first. And the I, I like that, you know, as they go up to the room, all of them grab, you know, several of them grab different weapons. Like, Grace has, like, a chair and, 
you know, I, I think it is it Zayde who grabs like a flower pot, and Hester grabs like it. It looked like it was made of marble or something, so probably nice and heavy. And Sam is, of course, the person who checks one particular area of Chanel Number One's room. And then she comes out of the closet, and it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Really loving all the 80s and 90s needle drops. Has there been any music on the show so far that wasn't, like, 80s or 90s? I'm not entirely sure. You know, because here we get uh, Boone working out to... Is it just called sunglasses at night? I, you know, when I when I say those words, you know what I'm talking about, certainly. And it looks like Boone. Did, yeah, and there we, you know, Boone says, "Am I supposed to be scared or something?" And then, you know, late at the end of the episode, we learn he wasn't actually dead. Right. It was also very funny when Denise got in the the car and like there's a there's a knife sticking out of the neck of her, you know, the, the other guard, and she's like, why is there a knife, you know, and drives, opens the door, shoves the body out, and, and keeps driving, and now that body is also missing, you know, so, let's see, we're two episodes in, and the Red Devil has attacked two people per episode, in the first episode, both of them died. In this episode, one of them turned out to be a trick. Now, and Brace is like, you know, so they're all sitting around the table, and like, you know, Chanel, the the yeah, they're they're trying to figure out, you know, who is, what's what's going on, you know, who's who's the who's the actual killer and such, and like. The, the, you know, I, th um, was it Zayde or Grace? One, one of them said, you know, well, we all saw you kill the maid, you know, and, and, she, you know, and then she's like, no, 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 the maid is running around with no face, killing people, you know, and the, the, yeah, you know, someone calls Chanel number one a psycho. And then she says, if anyone's a psycho, it's Hester. And she's like, thank you. Because <laughs> she feels seen, you know. She's so happy to have been recognized by mom. Mom number one, to make it less confusing. And <laughs> Denise and Chad both, you know, bust in. Chad Radwell has something to say. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you want to go? No, 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 no. Not just do your, do your thing, you know. <laughs> And Denise explains about the missing body, and then Chad is like, Chanel, I banged like 50 chicks since I broke up with you. Also, Boone is dead. Boone is so dead. And, you know, right before the episode ends, we get a very Halloween 1978 opening POV shot, you know, as the Red Devil goes into the morgue, and... You know, then we see Boone faked his death, uh, you know, and and peels off the thing, you know, finally you got it. I, I love that that's how they reveal it. It's not just that he's, like, already sitting there like, ah, oh, come on, fin you know, finally you're here. No, he, like, he was inside the, the thing and gets, you know, and, and the eyes pop open, just, yeah. That was also when, when Hester was talking about Okay, if her eyes are open, she will haunt us. If you lock the door, she'll say, you know, all these things about just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, I, I really love that everyone's a suspect. Everyone, like, basically everyone has some motive. And I already mentioned that I think pretty much everyone has had at least one line that really makes it sound like this might be... Maybe not Grace. I'm not entirely certain if Grace... But I can't help but wonder if she does secretly hate the... You know, maybe she actually secretly hates sororities because 
She convinces Zayday to join. If both of them hate sororities, that means she has an ally on the inside. And she has been very critical of Chanel Number no. 1 since she started pledging. Like, she says a lot of things that are... So, you know, maybe she is trying to... Because, remember, when she says she loves sororities, she's talking to her dad. Because if her dad knows, I don't think Wes is good at keeping secrets. You know, if, she, if Wes knows that 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 she's there to take down the sorority from the inside he's gonna be like my daughter is in there in that college she's trying to take the sorority down from the inside and i think it's gone wrong you know so, something so you know she she tells zayday that she loves sororities because if she tells zayday you know that she wants them to tear it down from the inside zayday might be like okay this is too much just because they just met you know, when they're talking about it, they literally just met. So instead, she's, you know, because Zayday doesn't like sororities already, so it's not a huge, it's not difficult to ally with her once you have convinced her to pledge, you know, so just, yeah. And, you know, the other Chanel's might want to take power from Chanel number one, something that was set up in the flashback where Chanel number one possibly accidentally killed the previous leader you know it is like yeah you know people want to be on top and you know nobody wants to not be on top in that kind of you know either you're either you're completely removed from it and you don't want anything to do with it or you're in there and you want to be at the top you know so and the yeah the pledges have all been treated badly so they have a motive for for killing you know keeping in mind the people who've been killed so far have been connected to sororities and france you know so it, which means that dean munch might be the the killer that would be her motive you know so just yeah it's it's and yeah pete hates chanel number one for how she treated him so i mean hypothetically Wes, because maybe he feels like, well, if he kills some of the sorority people, maybe his daughter will stop trying to be a sorority member. You know, so so all of these just, yeah. Um, really, really love the, the show so far. And, yeah. The, I think that is... It for now, uh, I don't actually. I don't think I did make sure to say in the first episode. I feel like they're doing a really good job making sure that, like, every single ep you know, yeah, these first two episodes. What I mean is, every single pledge, every single supporting character has at least something. Like, Boone was barely in the first episode, but you remember him because he said that Michael Bay was the greatest director. Of oh my god, I can't even say it, I can't even get the words out. It's it's just it's such a such an absurd statement, but you know, you remember it. And and yeah, Chad wasn't a big part of that episode, but you remember him because of how much of a douche he is talking about, you know, let's fire some or, you know, they're they're firing golf balls at Amnesty International people, you know, so just yeah. The the um, let's see. Um yeah, that is everything that I had for now. So yeah, really looking forward to next episode, which is looking like it will be one week from now, next Thursday. And I will be doing a movie, um, yeah, it'll probably be Saturday or Sunday, so I hope to catch you then.